Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth installment of the Critical Reflection Syntheses. This week we have three synthesizers, Allison, Chelby, and Tyler, and they'll be giving us their takes on the uneven aspects of the various social platforms that exist today. So without further ado, let's see what they had to say. Aloha. Uneven aspects, the synthesizer edition. Um, social networks chosen were Twitter and LinkedIn at number one tied, and then Facebook following close behind, and then MySpace, Tumblr, and YouTube. Uneven aspects of social media platforms um, included access to the platform itself having barriers, lack of informational literacy, awareness being exploited by the platform. Uh, users are not coming from a level playing field to begin with. This pay to play where LinkedIn premium allows you to make more connections and have more insights if you can afford it. Creators or controllers of the platform are predominantly white or Asian. Misinformation and gatekeepers of information. The platforms have algorithms in place. Often you will see the type of content you're already looking at, even including targeted advertisements coming at you. And um, you know, you'll also see information based on who you're already connected to. How are racial and ethnic divides reinforced on the platform? Well, the platform itself has bias or has been accused of racism in some cases. Censorship happens to minorities at a higher level. Social and racial divisions in real life are reinforced and amplified online. This is based off of Boyd. People self-segregate online. They follow like-minded individuals. We often create communities that make us comfortable. Opportunities depend on social connections and social capital and who you know. So if you are not in the high socioeconomic status community, how do you get up there? Informational inequalities lead to peer influence, homophilia reflects and amplifies existing racial and ethnic divides. Quiz questions that were chosen. Number one, chosen by three of you, how many people in the US live in poverty according to the US Census Bureau? Then there were two five-way ties between two people choosing a question and then there were five where just one pick. A lot of them had to do with income, um, how much money somebody has, can they buy a house, their ability, gender inequity and in pay, wealthy students attending high poverty schools performing worse than poor students who attend low poverty schools, majority of people being from rural areas and many children around the world, 16,000 dying each day from hunger related causes. Welfare doesn't get a whole lot of support from our government. And yet, according to uh, Shelby's reflection, Millionaires are the people that are controlling these platforms. Just something to think about. Mahalo. Hi, everyone. So for Critical Reflection 5, we were to pick a social platform and look at the uneven aspects of these social platforms. Based on everyone's reflections, we talked about seven main platforms being Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, Tumblr, and YouTube. Some themes I saw in the unequal aspects was segregation and social divisions being amplified online. Basically, before we enter these social platforms, offline, we have created these social groups that we are already connected to. And now that we are online, it just kind of amplifies these issues. As Natalie points out, each of us also has this status that reinforces our credibility when we network with others. There's also this issue of information literacy. A lot of the information that we see on our feeds comes from our peers, which makes us question how reliable is this information. And as Kelly points out, it can even shape our own beliefs. In terms of racial and ethnic divides, a lot of us talked about the unconscious bias where we tend to connect with those who are most like us. As Mike points out, even the developers of these apps or developing, continuing to develop these apps have this bias, has this bias in mind. And this kind of connects to how Allison and Mike both point out shadow banning and people, users being silenced and posts being silenced based on their ethnicity. In terms of access, um, as one of our readings pointed out, not everyone has access to a computer or Wi-Fi, and Daniel points out that less or more communication is formed based on this unequal access. And just because it, technology and these platforms are available, it doesn't mean that everyone knows how to properly use it. And both Samantha and Saul make a good, gives a good example of how teenagers may use this social media platforms but face some consequences. However, positive in a positive light, it raises awareness for information being spread. As Kristen points out, Facebook can be used to spread or learn more information about the LGBTQIA plus um, community or as we've seen in, couple, in the last couple months, the Black Lives, movement, Black Lives Matter movement. 
Lastly is the algorithm. What we see on these feeds is based on what we like or follow. Tyler puts it in a good way where he says that it's a, basically an echo chamber of like-minded information. And Brian expands on this idea by calling it an information bubble that we are forming on these biases. Based on everyone's questions that they talked about in, related to class and poverty, I divided this into four main themes, one being race and gender. There is 1.2% of women who are CEOs, and Lindley expanded on this idea by looking into further statistics where she found that 0% of black women are CEOs. Both Kristen and Allison also focused on the idea and question about denial rates for mortgage loans are higher for blacks and Hispanics. In terms of welfare and spending, both Elizabeth and Candace talked about how the government prioritizes on corporate welfare. And besides our money being spent for um, the social security and welfare, it's also being used to fund the defense, our defense and the interest on paying off the interest of the government debt. In terms of the wealthy and CEOs, most CEOs are mostly white males. And what I pointed out is that a lot of the wealthy have the most biggest following on social platforms, and it, this makes them more powerful. A lot of us talked about low social and economic statics. Hyun puts this in a good way where she talks about how this is based on where you grow up, where you go to school, and where you work. And as Judy points out, this kind of creates a caste system. So we see these divides, and we kind of stay in these divides. Lastly, these are just some notable insights that I noticed from everyone's reflections. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone, this is Tyler, and this is my synthesis for Critical Reflection number 5. This week we switched themes to race and ethnic divides, differences, and needs. With that, we were asked to select a social media network and one question from the Class and Poverty Awareness Quiz, and then we discussed how these two themes played into each other and into a larger theme. So let's start off looking at what we all decided to look at in terms of social media networks. Um, for social media, there were clear favorites among us with various, for various reasons, with Twitter and LinkedIn both taking up a quarter of the class's responses. Facebook followed close behind with three out of the 16 of us choosing it and two people choosing Instagram, while YouTube, MySpace, and Tumblr were all selected once. However, we see a much more diverse spread when we look at the other questions everyone chose. Specifically spanning 10 questions, this is number 3, 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Considering the openness of this assignment, it's interesting to note that we collectively touched on a number of ideas and themes surrounding social inequity and race, but kept fairly tight within those themes, at least to my understanding. Some big ideas that stood out to me were the ideas of homogeneity within your social groups, uh, so whether consciously or not, as well as how this ties back into socialization and our preconceptions or hidden biases that are ingrained in us. In an interesting turn, we did see the re retreading and reincorporation of past concepts such as access to resources and information literacy arise again, uh, this time citing it as a symptom of racial or social inequity. One idea that popped up repeatedly was how bias, again, whether conscious or not, was built into the systems we then use, namely in the form of algorithms. Social media tries to feed its users what they like and in that way inhibit the flow of new ideas between social spheres, cutting a community into communities. A number of responses cited the platform's mission statements and how there was unintentional bias built into the core belief systems of these platforms. Other themes that popped up include social pressures to both act a certain way and perform within a certain space, our own fa facades versus ourselves. Socioeconomic achievement links to capital gain, which is linked to ca uh, academic achievement, which is linked to socioeconomic achievement, at, which is an Ouroboros that highlights the faults of inequity in our own society. These are some of the themes I felt were important to highlight this week, and that's my presentation.